Macintosh. You like your Macintosh. You like your Macintosh. Your Macintosh. Apple. Apple. And the Macintosh of all the machines I've ever seen is the only one that meets that standard. iPod. A thousand songs. Okay, we are here at uh, Mebo with one of the founders, that's right? Yes. So who are you? I am Yiling Lari. I'm one of the three co-founders. Um, okay. My other two co-founders are Seth Sternberg and Sandy Jim. Okay, so um, so you guys are integrating all those different messengers that we have, which is hell, because we would like <laughs> to have only one, okay. but it's not possible. It's in the in the perfect world, we would only have I, uh, AIM or or uh, of um, MSN Messenger or things like that, but we don't. Uh -huh. So um, and you are doing that. How did the idea? Uh, from? Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, Mebo did not, I guess Mebo launched officially in September of 2005. Okay. Um, but we, Sandy, Seth, and I were actually working together for about two years prior to that on different okay. projects. Mm -hmm. And so we worked together. Um, my, my computer got stolen at my previous employer. Mm -hmm. So our first idea, we worked on it for about a year, was actually working on online backup. Okay. And so we built that. We were really excited about it. We were in kind of toying with the idea of taking investment. Yeah. But then at the last moment, we decided, you know what, this is just not something that we really want to dedicate many, many years to. Yeah. And really, you know, so we decided to try a different idea. Our different idea was doing something um, with um, being able to share content among our okay. friends more easily. Did that one for, I don't know, probably about eight months. Okay. Got to kind of a similar point. We didn't need investment for this one, so we were really excited because it didn't have any infrastructure and it was just running under one server under Sandy's desk. And then we got to the point where um, we were working on it very, very hard, but the momentum just dipped a little bit. And we, we thought, you know what, let's just try a different project. Okay. And Sandy said, you know, I have 13 IM accounts. <laughs> and I'm having a hard time being able to take them. That, that's a lot. It is an enormous amount. I'm I having, didn't even know that there is so many. It's amazing. You should see, she's got like an entire hierarchy of screen, screen names. Okay. Some just for her family, some just for her friends. And then, I don't know. So she, um, we, and at the same time, there was all this really interesting web technology yeah. coming up. And so I had been um, kind of into DHTML and JavaScript okay. about two years prior to that. So it was kind of a natural collision yeah, where Sandy yeah. had this problem. Um, was I, she using I any, this, any of the um, desktop-based um, mm -hmm. program? Yeah, um, she had to. <laughs> I, I would yeah. hope, because otherwise you end up with having 13 yeah. different windows. <laughs> What, what we already do with, with like, because some things are not integrating, so we still have some different windows, but it's like yeah. two or three right now. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, and so it started from there, and it was just one of those things that we decided to do it as a, a side project, the second project that we were really working on, but the momentum just went up, and so we started working on it more than we ever had before. Okay. And I had, um, I had a lot of vacation hours that I had, um, had not used as okay. a previous employer at Synaptics, and so I started taking off time to work on it, and then at some point, it just so you took vacation to work. Yeah, and so when you're doing that, it's kind of a good okay. sign. That <laughs> I tried to explain that in Europe. <laughs> so then, as Sandy, as soon as um, as we we both of us put our jobs to work on it okay. before we took investment, before we before we had even launched, actually. So we had no idea if it was going to fly or not. Okay. But we really wanted to build it, and we wanted to see what happened. And we felt like this was the the project that we were both really passionate about. Okay. So we just made it made it happen. When we first came out with localization, which I'm guessing, if I had, if I remember correctly, was maybe six to eight months after we had launched yeah um, within about two weeks we had um, I think it was like 20 or 30 languages that were just Whoa. translated nearly overnight right That's so cool. we see a lot of users in um, the UK we see a lot of users in Asia so you've translated in the UK in, in English for the UK or what yeah we do we do we do <laughs> really yeah we do oh, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that actually, the credit goes to Paul, who is here. He's from that's the UK. That's a funny story. We've discussed about that with Regina at Plexo, which is okay. responsible for globalization, uh -huh. about the different language inside of the language. Yeah. Like, like I'm, my native, my mother tongue is French, and you, we cannot really speak with the French Canadians, for example. Interesting. Yeah, well, okay. yeah, we would like they speak normal, but they, <laughs> they speak their own French. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess sometimes between English people and, and American people there is some, some trouble. But it, it's interesting um, you, that you say that. Um, did you run into the, the typical formal, informal uh, problem that I discussed with, Fla with Plexo? Because you know, in English you don't have this problem. But in, um, in German or in French you have the, the formal way of speaking to somebody right. and the informal, so like the polite version. Did you run into this problem of, of having a, a message box saying you like the informal you and somebody running at you like a German saying, oh, you cannot use this thing? No, not with informal okay. and the formal. We did with punctuation. And maybe, okay. maybe you yeah, can explain is, this. Yeah, that's a big right, deal. The period, like a space. Yeah, period, in, yeah. basically <laughs> in French, and I think German is the same thing. It's yeah. uh, if you put um, uh, actually everything which is a double needs a space before and a space after. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's a double point, space before, space after, whereas in English you don't have a space before. Uh -huh. uh, if it's a, a, a question mark, it's also double, because you have the line plus the point, so it's double. So that's, that's the simple rule to retain, to, to memorize, it's, it's double, double. That's something that I learned, I didn't know yeah. until we had yeah. the wiki translation. So. Yeah, that's, so that's, and, and, but, but, I mean, a lot of people are, are, are proud in punctuation in their own language, okay. so, and punctuation is pretty important. I, every time that I run here in the volley and say, I'm going to go to Mebo, they say to me, oh, you're going to speak to Seth. <laughs> What? <laughs> what's what's with that? Oh, is he like the, the the really famous guy in the valley or what? Oh, Seth is a fantastic guy, and um, he he is just amazing at what he does. So Seth handles Sandy and I. Um, Sandy is responsible for the backend, so she knows all of this C plus plus development and keeps our servers okay. happy and running. So um, and then I'm I, I handle all of the web and kind of product side of it, okay. and Seth handles all of the business and is the person who is out there and. Um, and talking to people about okay. ways that we can make Bebo even better. So. so you're telling me that the two girls are the technical ones and uh -huh. the, the guy is the non-technical. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty uh, uh, atypical. I, it works out. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool thing. And um, how, how did you expand, guys? Because at the beginning you were only only you three. Uh -huh. And now? Um, so now I think we have about 15, 16 okay. people, which is cool. good. Um, and so we, we officially took funding in December 2005. Okay. So we have been around for just a little over a year, I guess like a year and four or five months. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we've just been, we've been growing very, very, very gradually. Okay. So um, interviewing is just something that we're constantly doing. Okay, and that's cool. Yeah, it's, um, and in terms of like, in terms of growth plans for the upcoming year, we're planning to um, to add a few more developers on both the back end and the front end side. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not planning to do, you hear about, you heard about like the bubble expansion. Yeah. We're not planning to do anything like that. So. We're living in level 2.0. <laughs> yeah, the communication, level. yeah, the communication, the team is absolutely fantastic. And mm -hmm. we really, we really prize that mm -hmm. above. Um, anything but else? How do you say the sec or do you see the second bubble? You you were implied in the first bubble or, or not, not not You know, the time? funny thing is that um, <laughs> when Sandy Seth and I launched Mebo, we had no idea that Web 2.0 really existed. Yeah. And it wasn't until somebody said, Oh, you're Web 2.0, and then we were just like, Is that right? <laughs> so, okay, we are. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And if you say so. Exactly. I don't know if um, if we've never really tried to, to yeah. put ourselves into that categorization. It's something that's just been applied to us. Mm -hmm. In terms of business model, how, how does it work? Because Obviously, until now, we don't see any banners on Mebo, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, that's actually an interesting point because a few weeks ago we launched Rooms. Okay. And so with yeah. Rooms, we've just started experimenting with different types of um, potential revenue opportunities. So one thing that we've always said from the very beginning is that when we did do revenue, we, we wanted to be really careful about the user experience. Yeah. Um, and so that's the reason that we have a lot of traffic on Mebo. We could easily put a banner ad up there, yeah. um, but that's just not something that we think that our users want and okay. our users haven't asked us for yeah. it. So um, when we launched Mebo.com, the first thing we did was we put up the bare bones and then we asked users for lots of feedback. Okay. And we said, is this working? Is this not working? So we thought the first features that users would want would be things like adding remove buddy and we were totally wrong and the first thing that they wanted were actually emoticons. Okay. So <laughs> who knew, right? Okay, yeah. Emote icons, they are super important. <laughs> Apparently. So emoticons. Especially the ones of MSN, the ones they also, like, also oh, wanted oh, password oh. encryption and access to Jack. Yeah. We're just about to yeah. that out a little bit. You know, that, but, ma that makes me crazy, by the way. The, the ones of MSN, yeah. they're those funky icons that <laughs> every Windows, uh, every Windows user is. And when I see MSN, I'm like, wow. It that's works. A bit it works overrated. for them. <laughs> It works for them, so. Because if you look at iChat or Skype or any other thing, which is more Mac based, of course, uh, yeah. um, it's it's pretty much more it's it's more simple, like like less funky. Because in MSN, uh, a lot of time, uh, some people on Windows will send you a, a, a smiley. They think you see it. Yeah. You just see a number. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, I, I know where you're coming from, but. So, um, so you are implementing all the funky uh, emote icons of. Uh, um, we haven't. <laughs> we haven't implemented all the funky emoticons of all the different yeah. things, but we've implemented a few, which have been fun, like the um, um, the pirate, the ninja. We now have the emo kid. We have the. Um, I just have some fun ones to play okay. with. So, but, cool. but for the going back to the revenue question, the thing we plan to do is, um, or the thing that we have done is, we've just put in the very, very, very first um, um, revenue okay. um, opportunities. So right now, Amiibo rooms. Um, when you are in a room and you've been watching so many different videos that your friends have um, yeah. contributed to the room, then every every I don't know fifth fifth um, every fifth item yeah. will be a very very short advertisement okay. and so that's our first and so we're looking to feedback and the feedback has actually been really good just okay. because the quality of our advertisements have been really mm -hmm. high so that's okay. something that we're yeah, hoping to explore. Obviously a lot of people will think that's only what you see, the client, oh, absolutely. but what's behind? No, Sandy, I wish Sandy were here to, to describe it because she deserves so much credit for what she's yeah. done. When, um, when Mebo first 
Um, before Mebo came out, the, if you read the blogs at the time, they would all say that doing web-based instant messaging was absolutely impossible just yeah. because of the scaling challenges that there were. Yeah. And so um, Sandy, Sandy is a huge um, huge fan of open source. Okay. And so she started out looking at Game and she basically stripped out all of the different UI elements of it. And so Game is really intended to run once on one yeah. on one um, desktop machine, right? Yeah. And so what she's done is she's been able to really strip out so many components of it so she can run thousands and thousands and thousands of it onto one okay. uh, machine. So we started out um, with Game, then um, we launched it. We found out that after maybe 150 users, we had some scaling <laughs> issues, which was pretty good for the first day or two. Yeah. We were thrilled to have 150 users all at the same time. Um, so then we started moving over to um, to Fast CGI, which okay. was which was um, a huge improvement. And then um, we moved over to Light TPD, and then Sandy actually wrote a custom um, module for Light TPD mm -hmm. in order to be able to um, pass through from the web to the client even faster. So I know you work with you guys work with Plexo or with companies like NetVibes. Uh -huh. Um, what's those re relationship all about, and what's next with Plexo in terms of uh, getting relationships with other companies? I think Plexo, um, Plexo is a fantastic company, and yeah. so um, one of the things I really like, uh, they do, they have a fantastic presence here, especially in the Web 2.0 community, just mm -hmm. with the Lynch 2.0s, and and it's one of the, f the oldest startups, so yeah, to say. That's it's so a true. startup started, which is five and a half years uh, amazing. old. Amazing. Wow. They started when there were very, very few. Yeah few companies being funded in that year, so mm -hmm. um, but we, we absolutely have a fantastic relationship with um, with Plaxo. And the other company is NetVibes, and so we've had a partnership with NetVibes for about a year now. And French so, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, when you go into NetVibes, it's one of the, yeah. um, one of the, Mebo is a part of that, and it's something okay. that you can have on your NetVibes. Anything experience. next you can talk about? Or, uh, Ooh, there are all sorts of things that... Um, that you can't are, talk about? Oh, no, no problem. There are... Um, we've been working on rooms for um, a while, and one of the things that we... One of our foremost priorities is um, making sure that the Mebo.com experience remains absolutely um, core, and there are a lot of really interesting things that we're coming out with. You spoke about the funding that you get, and, uh, and obviously uh, a lot of companies here in the Valley are like that. In Europe, it's not much like that. Oh, can you imagine working in an environment where you don't go and get f funds, but you, you have to work out all of yourself, so to say, like in oh, Europe. Yeah. It's way harder. It is harder. And I mean, when we started, when we started Meepo, the, the I am one, yeah. we didn't know if we were going to take funding or not. Okay. It, really, it was not something that we had intended to do, but it was just at a certain point, Sandy was spending more time managing all of the servers and doing more ops things yeah. than she was doing development and we had users who were asking us for features and we just we couldn't maintain it without extra yeah, help yeah, yeah. and so we took um, we took the funding in order to be able to pull on more people onto okay. the team and be able to, to support it to be able to do what the users wanted us to do when Mebo first started we, yeah. we we had no we we didn't have any intent to take funding yeah. so that was something that um, that what happened was we launched September 2005, mm -hmm. and then um, a few weeks later we found that Sandy, um, Sandy especially, was spending all of her time tending to computers okay. and doing more operations things as opposed to being able to respond to all of the requests that users were asking us for. Okay. So we took funding to be able to pull a few more people onto our team to be able to help us out with those requests. So that was... Um, um, so Simon was a, was one of the first people to join us, as was Andrea, as was Jen, and so um, the the people that we have probably about um, fifteen people today. Okay. Um, but one of the things that's really nice um, about about um, Silicon Valley today compared to five five years ago is that starting a company has become so much easier. Okay. And so um, five Get, years ago, and getting funding also or what? I wouldn't say that necessarily okay. for getting funding. <laughs> that's, not, that's, still, that's still harder. Yeah, I, but I mean, just the number of open source projects that yeah. are out there, um, the number of the, just the support in the community, um, being able to start a company, it's it's become much more democratized. And I wouldn't say people who have an idea and want to be able to move with it are much much more able to do that okay. than they were five years ago. Mm -hmm. And then the nice thing is that you can test your idea, you can put it in front of users, and you can really you can kind of get. Um, I think whenever you go to investors now, they're they they're in some ways more savvy than they were five years ago. Because mm -hmm. when you go to investor now, they're looking for you to have already built up that community yeah. base. They are looking for you to have already tested your idea and to already shown some momentum. Okay. So I think that right now they're kind of complementary. So you can start something, you can get an idea, you can test it out, and then you can really um, you can get the investment when it makes sense. Okay. Um, you talk about um, the UI framework. Um, as a Mac user, um, I wish I could customize a little bit the the interface of. Um, um, of, of, me of Mebo, <laughs> but it looks a little bit Windowsy. It does look a little bit Windowsy, but you'll be happy to know that our visual designer is an avid Mac user as okay. well. So, and he's absolutely working on all sorts of fun skins and playing with that. So that's okay. something that we are, we are, we're definitely not ignoring you. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, not only <laughs> me, just the, the whole, the whole Mac community. Mac community. 
it to you. Absolutely, I totally Because if they log that. on and they feel like, whoa. It's a little Windowsy. It's it is a, little a little mix windows. between Windows and Linux, I would it, say. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's true. So, so um, okay, you're working on that. Okay, thank you very much. And um, I'll have to come back tomorrow again when I have a new tape. Sounds good. No problem. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>